Hello everyone, welcome to our online photography course. Today we're going to discuss the most important step you need to take to become a better photographer. Whether you're talking about crime scene photography, professional artistic photography, it doesn't matter. Composition is where it all starts. And by composition, I don't mean the pixels in your camera or the color, or the light in the image. I mean you, you as the photographer choosing what is in your shot. So let's get started. When it comes to crime scene photography, there are several cardinal or very important rules that you're gonna to need to learn. The first refers to composition. When I took my first photography course in grad school, my professor asked me a question. He said, hey, if I give you this big expensive camera with all the extra lenses, the external flashes, high digital sensor and tripod, all that, and I use this little point and shoot camera I got from a drugstore, who do you think will end up with the best crime scene photograph? Well, the answer might be obvious, but he would. My professor at the time had about 30 years of photographic experience and I had about 10 minutes. <laughs> so he would take the better photograph because he understood the first most important concept of crime scene photography and that's to fill the frame. The first cardinal rule of crime scene photography is to fill the frame. That means that you, as the photographer, need to make sure that what's important, what we call your subject matter, takes up as much space as possible inside the frame of the picture. Let's take a look at some actual crime scene images that will show you examples of how to follow this rule. Let's take a look at this image of the gun here. Would this be considered a good crime scene image? The first question to ask is, does it follow the first cardinal rule of crime scene photography? And the answer to that is no. We can tell that this is an image of a gun in the grass. Okay, that's great. But what else can it tell us? We can't see any other items in the scene. We don't know where the gun is located in relation to any other items in the scene. So the only information in this picture is that the gun, the subject matter, is lying in the grass. So why waste all that space around the gun? Remember, the subject matter needs to fill the frame. This image would be considered a much better crime scene image because the subject matter fills the frame. You still have the same visual information that the gun is in the grass, but now the subject matter takes up as much room as possible in the frame of the image. This image corrects the first issue in the previous image by zooming in or getting closer to the gun. Besides zooming in and orienting yourself to fill the frame, keep in mind that the image you create in your camera is not a perfect square, it's a rectangle. So we always want to make sure that the shape of the object we're photographing fits the shape of the viewfinder and the resulting image that we are creating. Let's look at some examples of how to do this. The knife in this image could be described as laying in a vertical position. Or put another way, it's longer than it is wide. But in this image, the camera is being held in a horizontal position. The frame is wider than it is long. To really fill the frame, we have to make sure that these shapes match. This is a much better image. Now the shape of the viewfinder and the camera frame match the evidence. Both are held and positioned horizontally, or they are both oriented so that they are wider than they are tall. So another way to fill the frame is to turn your camera so that the shape matches the shape of the evidence. Keeping in mind the first cardinal rule, let's talk about shadows. Crime scenes don't often happen in a lab, and they never happen where evidence is laid out nicely and neatly under perfect lighting for you to photograph. Just never happens. Inevitably, you're going to run into shadows, and shadows can be very distracting. Not only that, but they violate the first rule of crime scene photography. Dark areas and glare can actually block out part of your subject matter. So another easy and important step in creating good crime scene images is to eliminate shadow. And that's actually pretty easy to do. Let's look at an example. In this image of the shell casing, it's laying halfway in shadow and halfway in bright sunlight. That's a problem for your camera. So how do we take this picture without moving the evidence? Simple, block the sun with your body. So once you've blocked the sun with your body, you've actually put the entire image into a shadow. Now all the lighting is even and your image is perfectly lit. 
Remember, if it's not important and it doesn't convey the scene the way you saw it, it shouldn't be in your photographs. Lens flare, which is created when sunlight is able to enter the lens directly, it will create images of the lens optical elements and aperture opening on the film sensor. It can be really beautiful and it can convey an interesting photographic pattern in artistic images, but it doesn't have any place in crime scene photography. To avoid lens flare, try not to photograph images where the sun is in front of you. If that can't be avoided, consider using a lens hood. If no lens hood is available, you can try blocking the sun by placing your hand above your lens. Here are your takeaway points. Having a bunch of fancy equipment doesn't necessarily make you a great photographer. Thinking about the images you're taking is the first step in taking excellent photographs. The first cardinal rule of crime scene photography is to fill the frame. And you fill the frame by zooming in, composing, managing shadow, and eliminating lens flare. Thanks for watching.